Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Hilton Center of the Las Vegas Hilton Hotel, where tonight, Don King Productions, in association with the, ho uh, the Hilton Hotel, presents Glory Hallelujah, a unification of the heavyweight championship of the world. These bouts are sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Dwayne Ford Chairman, Harold Buck Executive Director, with commissioners at ringside, Sig Rogic, Herb Santos, Freddie Little, and Sammy Macias. The sanctioning bodies and the representatives of those bodies at ringside, representing the WBC, its president, Jose Suleiman, representing the WBA, its president, Gilberto Mendoza, and representing the IBF, its president, Bobby Lee. The officials assigned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission for the next bout of the evening, the judges are Julio Roldan of Venezuela, Phil Newman of New Jersey, and Bill Graham of Las Vegas. The timekeeper is Al Bicek. Counting at the night downs, Mike Lachella. The attending physicians at ringside, Drs. Flip Omansky, Donald Romeo, and Elias Ghanem. And your referee is Mills Lane. This is the main event of the evening. Twelve rounds of boxing for the unification of the heavyweight championship of the world. Introducing, in the blue corner, fighting out of Houston, Texas, weighing 221 pounds, with a professional record of 34 wins, no defeats, 29 KOs, he is the IBF heavyweight champion of the world, Tony TNT Tucker. And in the red corner, from Catskills, New York, he too weighs 221 pounds. He is undefeated in his professional career. 30 wins, no defeats, with 27 KOs. He is the WBA and WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike Tyson. Okay, now, here, here we go, now. You've had your trucks in the dressing room to protect yourself at all times. In the question, Mr. Tucker is chief second. In the question, Mr. Tyson, the chief second. Let's get it on, come on. There's a line in the movie Full Metal Jacket. You can talk the talk, can you walk the walk? It's time for Tony Tucker now to walk the walk. Or run the mm. run, as it were. And we'll see what kind of tactic Tucker takes. I was expecting Mike Tyson to jump right on Tony Tucker. Tucker, I had figured that he should at least tie his man up, try to frustrate Mike Tyson. But is he strong enough to do that? Well, that was a good right hand by Tucker. That might have been the best shot that Mike Tyson has ever taken right there. Did you know that uppercut blocked Mike Tyson? This man, Tucker, may have found out a weakness. He may have seen something. Technically speaking, no one gave Tucker a chance, but there are miracles here. The last time Tony Tucker lost a fight was in 1978. You know, a lot of times people say, well, what do you see in Mike Tyson? And we always felt that he was susceptible to take jazz, but I think what Tucker saw in, in Tyson was the uppercut. He was susceptible to the uppercut because of his style, the way he launches in. That was one of the few times I have ever seen Mike Tyson stopped by a punch. Come on, quick drive. Come on, here we go. What happened then was the best thing that Tucker could have done. Maybe got some respect for Mike Tyson. Step back, step back. Tucker said step when we back. talked to him, he said, I'm not worried about what he's going to do to me. I'm worried about what I'm going to do to him. That's confidence. Another right hand. right hand by Tucker. Tucker seems willing to brawl with Mike Tyson early. Step back. Get him up, Tony. Come on. There was a left hand by Tyson. Also, Tucker said, Tony Tucker stated that because no one expected him to win, that was motivation. And he's fighting with sheer motivation here. A lot, a lot of confidence. 
Yeah, he said he likes being the underdog, even though it's the first time he's been one, probably since he was an amateur. You know what's happening? Every time Mike reaches in, Tony comes with the right hand, a counter right hand. Hey, step back, quick, the punch. Step back, here we go. Another thing you have to say about Tucker is that he has fought to the level of his competition and just a little bit better enough to win. Against James Broad, frankly, I didn't think he fought that well, but it was against James Broad. Against Douglas, he fought a little bit better. And now we'll see what he can do against certainly the best fighter he's fought so far. Sit back, Mike. Sit back, Tony. Sit back, clean. Here we go, clean. Here we go. Again, a right hand, but he took a right from Tyson. And another big right by Mike Tyson. Did a very good first round for both men, and particularly for Tucker. With a great left hand at the bell by Tyson. Well, Tony Tucker is a 10 to 1 underdog. He wasn't 10 to 1 in that round. Now let's see the uppercut almost immediately after the bell. He follows a right with a left and rocks Tyson. The first time we've ever seen Tyson really rock back like that. And again, it looks like Tucker has been coached to look for the left hand. Now there's the right hand that landed high on the head of Tucker and did no damage. And sitting way up in left field, uh, folks, is Michael Spink sitting in the last row of the balcony here at this place. We'll show you a picture of him later on. Mike is Tyson is still trying to keep that pressure going. Kevin Rooney told him, go to the body, don't look for the one punch to the head. What I like about Tucker is the fact that he's throwing combinations. He's not throwing one, two, he's putting three, four punches together. And he's following up with left uppercut, left hooks. Led with the left uppercut that time. Just has to keep those hands high. That's very important. Because Mike is rocking left and right, left and right, and looking for an opening. Mike. Get back, Tom. Here we go. Well, you know, Ray, I, I hearken back to your fight with Marvin Hagler, where after the first round, there was no question in my mind, at least, that your confidence just really surged, and you have to think the same thing about Tony Tucker. The first, surviving the first round actually can turn the tables around the fighter. It uh, gives him the confidence. And again, what well, I like in Tony Tucker, there is the fact he threw him one, two, three. He's following up with the left hook. He's finishing his combinations with the left hook. He's using his height, his reach. Good body shot by Tyson. That's exactly what Kevin Rooney was telling him to do in the corner. Now, see, this is what uh, Tucker needs to do. Keep tying his man up. Every time he gets inside, you got to tie those arms up and not let Tyson work that body. Tyson changed. Tyson is trying to slow Tucker down by body shots. He's working his body, trying to slow those legs down and bring those hands down. That was a little bit low, and I think it's going to draw a warning. You go down there again, you're coming. Come on. Two good jabs. Interestingly enough, Kevin Rooney had told us that when he tells Tyson to jab, he's not jab telling him to jab to box. He's telling him to jab to get inside. What I want you to look for, also, when Tyson comes in, he puts both feet together, so it's easy to be knocked down. That was a good example. That uppercut is going to do the job over and over again. Almost hooked him with the left hand before bringing the uppercut underneath. He did hold him. That is a look of confidence in the face of Tony Tucker. He's tying his man up once again. Very smart thing to do. He really wants to frustrate Mike Tyson. There was a left hand by Tyson, but it did not appear to hurt Tucker. Both of you. Time. 
Well, Tucker wasn't given much chance, but of the five billion people on the planet, he's the only one who has a chance to beat Mike Tyson tonight. And right now, he's taking advantage of it. Come on. Yeah, when you come in, come on. Hey, if you're doing that. Keep your balance. When you punch him, walk him. Turn him sideways and walk him. Give me the bucket. Give me the bucket. Give me the bucket. And there's Michael Spinks way up in the last row of the bleachers here. He went up there as a publicity stunt to get some attention, to get a future fight with Tyson. Of course, when he was in the tournament, that's about as near to the ring as he wanted to get with Tyson. I think that was Bob Euchre sitting next to him, wasn't it? <laughs> You're making a miss real good, you gotta come up punch him right away. This is the third round. A lot of people did not think it would go this far. Here we go again, tying his man up. Again, very good, good tactics here. You can't allow Mike Tyson to punch inside. Now we need to see some jazz by Tucker. And some lateral movement, which we see now. And catch up, try to catch Tyson coming in with his head. Time, ho, ho, time, time, step back. And, 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 Mike, step back, time. And keep those punches up. Don't go down there again. Come on, come on. Mills Lane, very take charge as a referee. No nonsense guy. Tucker with another left hook to the head of Mike Tyson. Body, body, body first, combination. All right, get off that neck, Tony. Get, get off that neck. To grab him, get off that neck. Get off. Took a tightest man up and got out of the corner. There was a good right hand again by Tucker. In close, catching Tyson on the way in. He finished with the left hook, Barry. We step to punch it. We step back. Also, we can punch it. Here we go. What's allowing Tony Tucker to get that hook and that uppercut in? What, what's happening is the lateral movement that Tucker has, his jab, he's catching Mike as Mike's boring him with the coming in with his head. The uppercut has been doing a tremendous and very effective job here. And Tony Tucker is doubling up his punches better than I've ever seen him do. There was a good left hand, and that staggered Tony Tucker. Again, he's tying this man up. It doesn't seem like much. It doesn't seem effective for Tucker to be tied up. Come on, come on. Go. He's getting warning from Mills Lane. But the fact of the matter is, frustration is what it causes. It creates frustration in the fight. Mike, you've got two hands are free, Mike. Okay. Two hands are free. All right, now you're tied in. Here we go. One step back. Crowd booing the tactics of Tony Tucker, but I'm not sure. Do you, you don't disagree with us? I don't tactics. disagree at all because Tony's been tying his man up. There was a good right hand by Tucker again. But they're uppercuts, Barry. Do you notice they're uppercuts? Again, we tease Tyler's man out. My frustration should show the face of Mike Tyson. There has to be concern now in Tyson's corner. This is the most competitive fight he has ever been in. One punch at a time, he makes you miss any pop at one time, you understand? You gotta use your depth. You gotta box him a little bit, you understand? Get the bounce in your leg. Seven, seven combinations. You gotta combinate. You gotta throw the combination. You're just looking for one shot. You understand me? There you see Tucker backing up, catching. Tyson on the way in with his long arms. And there, an uppercut. He's fighting a perfect fight. And I'm going to show you my scorecard here in a moment. So far, I have Tucker winning two rounds, Tyson winning one, Tucker ahead by a point. This is, of course, about as unofficial as you can get a scorecard. Our unofficial official judge, Harold Letterman, is not with us tonight. He will be back with us in future fights.
We start the fourth round. And in Tyson's corner, they told him to box more. Just get your legs under you. Well, in the corner of uh, Mike Tyson, Kevin would say, we need to see combinations, not look for one punch. And that's where normally Tyson's able to dominate his opponent because he throws a barrage of punches. Not one punch because one punch normally is not going to do it. Interestingly enough, it is Tony Tucker who really is dictating the tempo of the fight, not Mike Tyson. I've never seen that before. You see the intensity in, in uh, Tony Tucker. There was a big left hand by Tyson, and that was the one big punch. And another one. You see, this is what Tyson wanted. He wanted uh, Tucker to stand there and exchange punch for punch. In this case, normally, Tyson comes out on top. Get him up, get him up, Tucker, come on. Step back. All right, Tony, if you go down there again, I'm going to penalize you. I think what the, the Tyson Corner is looking for is whether or not Tucker can withstand this type of pressure. Get him up, Mike. Come on. Mills Lane once more come giving on. a warning, the second All one right, to Tony come Tucker. Come, 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 come here. And I was going to talk to him. Now both sides are going downstairs to watch you. Watch those punches. Come on. Yeah. I'm going to step back. Come on. Give it to Step back. Get back. back. Here we go. Tyson needs to use his jab to get in because a lot of times he's lunging in, which makes him very, very vulnerable for a counter punch. Right hand. The jab of uh, Tony Tucker is starting to work again. He just has to be more consistent. Here we go. Take it downstairs sometime. He needs to throw a jab downstairs, bring it back up to the head. There's a right hand again by Tyson, but. Tucker appears unhurt again. Definitely has his legs back under him after being hurt earlier in this round. That voice you're hearing is the voice of Kevin Rooney. What a good shot. And Tyson with another left hand. 25 seconds left, round four. Very competitive now, fight so I far. Tyson there is just trying to wear his man down. He's just trying to slow that movement down. That movement seems to be affecting Mike's punches because he's not able to get his punches in there. And every time that Tucker stands still, you notice a big left hook land from Mike Tyson. Tyson has settled down in that round going for a long fight now. Now he knows he just has to fight him, hit him, and if the knockout comes, it comes. Put your head back, put your head back right there. Open up. Look, two good, real good right hands. Two real good right hands for the body there. He came back with a left hook once. You gotta concentrate more on that. He still gotta jab with this guy. What are you gonna do is jab with him, you understand me? Don't let him bounce on, Danny. He made his jab. Just mm -hmm. lie. And them committed to they make you move. Okay. Now you keep that jab on him. Up, up, and, up and down. Tyson is working closer into, Tyson, into Tucker. There you saw that he followed a right to the body that was an effective ray, but then he had him there for the left that he did throw right behind him. But Tyson's starting to double his punch up a little bit more. He's starting to put his combinations together a lot more than in an earlier that. round. Put Tony, get and in doing so, he punch should punch be able to on. land on the chin of Tony Tucker. You know, something that could become a factor that you never thought would have is the fact that this, only a day ago, was a 15-round fight, and it has now been made a 12-round fight. And originally, you'd have thought that's sort of like making War and Peace from 1,200 pages to 1,000. Good point, but it's becoming something that could be a factor. Well, the factor is that Tony Tucker has initiated respect. He stood his ground. He rocked Mike Tyson the first round with a beautiful uppercut. So there's mutual respect here. Good hand speed by uh, Tony Tucker. I just don't like when he stands there and exchange punches. Tucker's corner telling him to wait for Tyson to make his move and then do your thing. Tyson got the better of that exchange. Step back, 
Tucker said that everybody that Tyson's fought has either run or stood right in front of him. And he said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move and I'll be firing. And through the first three rounds at any rate, I'm not so sure about the fourth, but the first three rounds, exactly what he did. I noticed that Tony Tucker's left hand is starting to jump. That could be very, very inviting for a counter right hand. A lead off right. There's a left hook. But you notice the left hand of Tony Tucker is starting to drop at the side. And that's been his history. Against James Broad, he had that left hand down at his side virtually all night. And even when he threw the jab, he brought it up from the hip. Well, that's how Buster Douglas was able to drop it because he had dropped his left hand. And Douglas countered with the right hand. I'm surprised there's not a lot of head movement from Mike Tyson. He's just walking directly in front of Tony Tucker. And that's why Tony's able to get those punches off. He should give him a little more head movement. Left, right, left, right. Be less of a target. That was a right hand, Barry, but you know the problem that Tyson is making, it's one punch, one punch. We have to see more combinations if you want to get uh, Tucker and get him out of there. I think Tucker, on the other hand, is fighting a superb job. He's doing a superb job. There was a right hand by Tyson. Left missed, right was right there. The cheer you just heard, ladies and gentlemen, is an old, a Las Vegas cheer. The over-under in this fight was the fifth round, which means that if you bet this fight to go past the fifth round and it was an even bet, you have won the bet. You would have heard a cheer either way. Right hand. Jab right hand to the body, right hand to the head. Spit it out. Take the sip to Listen, don't get the... The guy done slowed down now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you can't wait on him. You yeah. got to take the knee, take the initiative. When you hit him to the fight, push him off. Don't grab him. Push him off and attack him. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying, baby? Yeah. He's got it for you now. Uh -huh. yeah, take control of the side. Do something different. You're coming straight and you let him run around. He's running around. Yeah, change it up just a little bit. You understand? More judge. More judge. Bad intentions. Go to point with bad intentions. You get the feeling from Tucker's corner, Ray, that they think this fight is winnable. Time, Did you see that? Time, 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 now, that was an interesting scenario. Tucker was trying to get his handlers and seconds out of the ring. The bell had rung. They were so excited about the prospect of possibly winning the fight, they forgot to put his mouthpiece in. You can understand now, Ray, why Michael Spinks didn't want to fight Tony on, Tucker. Tony, so, I think Tony Tucker has surprised a lot of people. Right hand by Tyson. Tucker's going to want him not to tie his man up, which I think is a good move because it doesn't allow Tyson to punch. But it actually, instead, they wanted to push Tyson off and go at him, which I think would be a costly mistake. Mike Tyson's perpetual motions always come to see the quickest rhythm, either with a jab or to tie him up and break that rhythm. I haven't seen anybody be able to push him off. And I think he's probably fought stronger oh, fighters. Get back. Come on, get the well, pushing a man off back. doesn't Clean necessarily help up. because you expend an energy by pushing a man off. Right hand by Tyson, back Tucker up. Oh, and step back, Mike. Give me the step Tyson's back, corner, you heard Come Kevin Rooney say bad intentions. That's become kind of a catchphrase between Rooney and Tyson. Step back, clean. Here we go. Step back. Step back. Here we go. Tyson's just walking his man down, trying to catch up with him. The mistake Tyson's oh, oh. making, All right, the he's there. following Tucker around the ring. You gotta break. cut the go. ring off. In doing so, you either move right or either left, depending on how, which direction your man is moving. Here, Tucker is moving to his right. And what Mike has to do is move to his left to cut his man off. All right, well, sit back. Come on, come on, sit back. He's punching left. Come on. 
the fact that Tucker has his height advantage, reach advantage, and a good boxer, and I tell you, he impressed me with his foot move because I didn't expect that much from him. But the fact of the matter is, it's making matters very, very tough for Mike Tyson to get in, to get inside. Tyson looks right now like he's in it for the long haul here. And there was a big right hand. Tucker says, no, no, I'm not hurt. I've always found that to mean I'm hurt. That right hand landed because, again, the habit that Tucker makes is dropping his left hand at his side. And he took another right hand, got cute, and paid the price. I think he's watched my fight before. Yeah, I think he has too. I think his timing is not as good as yours. them legs and using that jab the same way. Yeah. And that right hand, you see you hit him with the right hand, you gotta do more of that. He's a difficult guy to fight. He's moving. Whenever you get close, he grabs. I haven't seen the punch out once yet. Let's take a look at that right hand that Mike Tyson got in. Yeah, you see him use the left hand just as a way to get in and then firing the right behind it. And this is good fighting now that he's settled down. The great fighters don't go out looking for a quick knockout. The great fighters go out and fight. And when the opportunity for the big punch comes in, they take it like that. And here's my scorecard so far. I have Tyson coming on in the last three rounds because Tucker has not been throwing as many punches as he did earlier. That little bit of insolence he had at the start of the fight to establish himself doesn't seem to be there anymore. He has to go on the attack. Mike is not able to get set. He's not able to set his punches up to land on Tucker. There he got a warning from uh, Mills Lane for punching while he was breaking. But again, you notice the movement of Tucker's really throwing Tyson off. Not allowing him to get inside and be effective. Tyson's jab in the last three rounds has been effective in allowing him to get inside on Tony Tucker. It's not a jab like Tucker's. Tucker, predominantly a boxer, and Tyson, of course, a banger. But his jab does allow him to work in. All right, one step back. Come on, one step back, Mike. One step back, Tony. Here we go. Come on. And we see Tucker trying to uh, at least get a second win. All right, watch the head. Watch the head, Mike. Oh, come on, come on. Come on, box. You're grabbing too much. Come on, watch the head. I'm impressed. But Tucker's really doing a fantastic job. He hasn't been as tense as he was in the first fight, has he, Ray, where he was just like he was uh, uh, just come out of an ice uh, an ice box, how t tense and tentative he was in the, in the fight with Douglas. He appeared to be as loose throughout most of this fight. No, I would, he's very relaxed. I think what did it was the first round when he walked Mike Tyson. He said, hey, I can punch too. Well, in fact, in that first fight, he got a cramp in his left arm in the first round, a knot actually formed, and it was with him the whole fight. Let him fight, come on! And he feels it was just from tenseness. Also, I think in the back of uh, Tucker's head is the fact that the more rounds he go, the more credibility that he has, because he wants to prove that he is indeed a great fighter. You know, another thing that I feel we should at least point out here is there was a rumor in Las Vegas boxing circles oh, 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 the last now, couple of days now, that... If you go down there one more time, it's going to cost you a point. Once okay, more warning on, from Mills Lane. Third time, he said the next time it's going to cost you a point. But there was a rumor about Tyson's, or rather Tucker's right hand, that he had injured his right hand, and that's why he backed off training oh, for the last back. few days. Back. That was three consecutive back. left hooks thrown by Tony Tucker. You don't see that from a big man. Not in a heavyweight. They don't throw those kind of punches. He's punching, Tucker's punching, tying up. Once again, Tucker trying to get cute and again getting the worst of it and still mugging with Tyson, which brings the crowd alive. Well, when you do that, and I know from experience because I invented it, you got to be very careful because you always, you're so, you're so vulnerable for a counterpunch. 
Ray, we have to give Muhammad Ali a little credit for that tactic. I don't think so, though. <laughs> Just a little bit. I think that's a sign of frustration that somehow he has been unable to get back what he had in the first three rounds of the fight. You win a round pretty easy, but you can win them easy if you would use your jab a little bit more. And you got to listen. You got to concentrate on getting inside and punching punch out. Punch out. You let him hold. You let him hold. Don't say that. Don't say that. Don't even think that way. Give me that. Spit it out. Follow it. You understand? You know what you're thinking about. Look at these punches. Go. Rip these punches. The band of tension. Now there you see. He's pointing at him. He's winding up. It's and up. he's going to get hit by Tyson's jab. <laughs> Talk about deflating somebody's balloon. Here we go. That seventh round with Tony Tucker being animated on his antics, the key to that is the fact from a psychological standpoint with the fighters intimidating this Hagler. I mean, I'm sorry, Hagler's on my mind now. But mm -hmm. Tyson, it really affects a fighter, especially when right, the back. champion on, can't on, get his on, punches on, off. It worked for me, and I'm sure Tucker thinks it's going to work for him. Well, it is a fact. Tony Tucker has watched the tape of the Sugar Ray Leonard Marvin Hagler fight on numerous occasions. His father has right, kind of used that, that as Tony, a on, tool to come get come on, his charge on. going. Unfortunately, it was only half half worked. But if you, if you analyze it, though, bro, actually, he's doing what I did to Hagler. He punched right, a little right. bit, he ties the man on, up, come on, come on, come on, and get back on his bicycle. Yeah, but you did that and made the punch count, and he did that and got hit. Well, the key is doing what you have to do and getting away from him, not, not being stationary. Another left hand. Okay, I like that in, in, in uh, Mike Tyson because he's throwing combinations again. But whenever he throws, looks for one shot, he's talking for a long, long night. In the middle of the last round, we talked about the rumor of Tony Tucker's right hand. And I've been watching him since that time. I've not seen him throw the right hand in anger since the middle of the last round. I hadn't noticed before that, but let's see when he does throw that right hand or if he throws the right hand. Well, in a fight of this intensity, this magnitude, when you're fighting, you really don't feel it because those drillers are blowing and you don't feel the pain. He did throw a right uppercut there, which missed. I want to step back. I'm going to punch. What punch? You want to step Tucker back. once again, tying up Mike, Mike Tyson. Not allow him to punch. Time, time, time. Give me time tape on the glove of Mike Tyson. They'll cut it off. Momentary timeout. That can make the world of a difference. Those few seconds, those few seconds of getting a brief can make the world of a difference. Cut it. Yeah. All right. cut it. it doesn't seem like much, but right here, Tucker's being uh, cooled off by his father with the ice pack on his neck. Ready? All right, here we go. This is the eighth round. We're scheduled for 12. Mike Tyson seems to have gained control of the fight. That right hand seems to have hurt Tucker. His knee seemed to buckle just a full second. Right hand up on the top of the head. When guys are in tremendous shape, it's very tough to see what, you know, to, to tell whether or not they hurt or not. That was a right hand by Tucker, so. Oh, let's step back. Come on. Let him go, Tony. Let him go, Mike. Let's step back. Here we go. Time. Time. Take a deep breath. Lean back. Take a real deep breath. Deep breath. Deep breath. Let it out slow. Take it on. One more. Trying to get a little meaner in here now. Open up. Off the rope. Right. Spit that out. Spit that out. Right Spit that right out. There we go. Open up again. There we go. Stop your foot. Break the hand. Keep him tied up and knock the whole time. I'll stand there. Box like you're doing. You're thinking you're looking like a champion. You're looking great. Frustrating. Oh. 
Hope he told me that sneak punch with one good shot and hurt you. Now you gotta move your head a little bit more. You're not moving enough. Move your head, come in, and get in there, and punch out. You're not punching out at all. You put your arm right around. You gotta punch out. You gotta think about that. You gotta get on me. The question for an athlete like Mike Tyson isn't whether he's going to win, but how he wins. It's like a Sebastian Coe, not whether he's going to win the mile race, but what his time is. So what we're going to watch from now on is really, can he break down Tucker? Can he get him hurt? Can he stop him? Can he end in style? Kevin Rooney in uh, Tyson's corner said, to move your head a little bit more, you need to see more head movement. That graphic a minute ago saying 15 rounds, as we mentioned, we are, of course, as of yesterday, going 12, not 15. You can hear Kevin Rooney yelling in the background, get on him, he said. Wanted Tyson to move his head, that's something, Ray, you pointed out about five rounds ago. Yes, you have to move that head in order to get inside and not be so stationary, because what would happen as, he bo as Tyson bores in the uppercuts? He's very susceptible to the uppercuts. There's a right hand by Tucker that backed Tyson off. Get him up, both of you, come on! Body shot by Mike Tyson. Let him go, Tony. Let him go. Here we go. There was a big left hand, but again, Tucker shakes his head. I'm okay. A lot of times, my left hook of Tyson has landed because that's the direction that Tony Tucker's movement, it takes away the power of it. It takes off the leverage. Let him go, Tony. Let him go. Step back. Here we go. What Tuck can be doing as he's moving to his right or left, what you do, you stop and then you then you uh, throw your punches. Then get back on your bicycle. Let him go, let him go, let him go, let him go, let him go. Over here, over here, hold up. I don't want to have to penalize, bro, stick punching some, okay? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Bill's Lance saying, I don't want to have to penalize you, let's do some punching. Tyson getting off quicker with his jab now. A good, short, strong, fast left jab of Mike Tyson. Watch the head, come on, watch the head, come on, come on, come on. Now it appears the instinct for self-preservation has kicked in with Tucker. More interested in defending himself than in attacking his opponent. Open up. And all you gotta do is throw your jab a little bit more. Where's the fire shield? I haven't seen a fire shield all night. Let that out here. Here we go. Let me get in here, Mike. He's working on the glove play. Okay, here comes the unofficial judge. That's me. I did score the eighth round even. I have Tyson ahead, 88, 84. That means by four rounds. And unless Tucker can put some real hurt on him, he's lost the fight. He has to knock him down or stop him. On my card. You pretty much agree with that judgment of Larry Merchant, right? I think it's a little closer than that. But uh, these last uh, few rounds here are very, very important. It, again, we talk about judges' criteria, how he's scoring the fight, whether or not he's scoring the most effective punches or the percentage of punches that are landed. Well, if, in fact, ring generalship is a key factor in judging a fight, I really do believe that since about the fifth round, Mike Tyson has been in charge of the fight. He has been the aggressive. Mike has not been able to land the kind of punches we've seen in the past. 
And the reason for that is because of the way that Tony Tucker is approaching and has approached this fight. All right. Let him, okay, let him go. One step back, clean. Add a boy. Add a boy. Add a boy. Here we go. Now Mike Tyson will get his right, here we go. Come on, come on. drawers lifted rather than his hand. Tony Tucker's right hand now is dropping, and that is asking for Mike Tyson's left hook. Tyson continually putting pressure right, on Tucker watch it, Mike, now. Come on, come on, come on, step back. And get that head up. Watch that head. See, come Mike on, can't on. get his left hook in because he come, he's coming in first with his head. He needs to throw a little short, that short jab, then step. Like that. Throw a jab, then step in. Get close. Now come. There it was. That's what you have to do. That's what he has to do, brother. This jab will get him closer to the taller man, Tucker, and then he can throw his punches. Once again, bro, you see what's happening here. Then he gets in. Now he's starting to cut the ring off. Now he's not following Tucker. Now he's inside again. The jab once again is effective. It's as effectively as I've seen Mike Tyson jab. His jab is awesome. He gets it in, but he has to use it more and work his way in. And remember, it's a different kind of jab. It is a jab that is designed to get him inside to be able to throw the left hand. The left hook, that is. Not a jab that you use just to keep a man off of you. Mike can't keep running with his chin like that. Not with the hand speed of Tony Tucker. And that height of Tony Tucker. All right, let him go. Let's get back, Mike. Let him go, Tony. Let him go. Here we go. I'm almost expecting someone to go down because a lot of times both guys are reaching in with their chins first. Tyson was a little short with both that right and the left. If this fight were a conversation, Tucker starts it off with a few feeble words and Tyson finishes off each exchange with an exclamation point, starting to really dominate the action now. I want to see five punch combinations. It's on one punch at a time. One punch at a time. Now we see that in that round, Mike Tyson threw 22 jabs and landed 16. And earlier when we showed you our punch stat before the fight, showed that he had been throwing roughly 10 jabs and landing half or less of them. So he's picked up using his jab. He's settled down and he's just fighting. He's not winging punches, not getting caught in as many clinches as we've seen him before. You got two rounds to go. You're in good shape. Now get out there and fight this guy for the full three minutes. Punch, baby. All right, try to get off. Yeah, and then you're ready, ready to go. grab a hold. I'm ready to go. Poppy, Poppy. Tucker needs to do something dramatic. Will he try? He looked a little bit like a tired fighter, just looking at him in his corner between those rounds. Oh, because he's never fought at this pace. But this is oh, when you reach down, down bro. This is when you on, show Mike, that you really, really want to win. This is when your body aches, your legs cramp, but you got to push it. You got to push it to the limit. And in Tyson's corner, they told him he got two rounds left, fight for the full three minutes. Your arms ache, you start, they start to drop, you know you have to bring him up because you know somebody can throw a counter right hand or left hook. And again, a timeout. This time it is the tape on the glove of Tony Tucker that comes loose. Again, Tyson has to his jab and get close, get inside. To work his way inside. That jab was going to get him closer. Tucker holding a little bit more early here in the 11th round. There's frustration in, in uh, Mike's face. And the reason there's frustration is because of what Tucker's doing. He's tying his man up. Those little antics there sometimes work. You get the, what you do, you reverse the crowd's uh, approval. I mean, he's fighting his fight. He's doing his thing. He doesn't care what people say on the books or writing the books. 
Well, if well, nothing else, you got to say Tony Tucker did fight Mike Tyson, and there's been a lot of Tyson opponents that haven't done that. Good left hook by Mike Tyson. And the voice you're hearing in the background is the voice of Kevin Rooney, Mike Tyson's trainer, saying, come on, you heard him. I mean, just check out Tony Tucker. He's a man of confidence. Let him go, Tony. Let him go. Come on, step back. Let him go. Let him go. Come on, Tony. 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 Come on, let him go. Come on, let him go. Here we go. Come on. All right, both of you. Come on, this box a little bit. Twenty quick grabbing. Come on, come on, come on, let's go. You know what happened? The crowd somewhat is booing. Some of them are booing, and while they're booing, because they expected the inevitable, it didn't happen for them. Tucker's fighting a great fight. This is a push around him. Be so slow. Stay on him. Phoenix, this guy's going to try his best to steal his round. You understand that? Yeah. They did. They got a shot. And he did something here. I don't know. You understand that? What do you want to call him? You understand yeah. Get out there and do something. Do something. Get in there with that David. Get in there. Get in there. Mike, Mike Tyson is one round away from becoming the unified heavyweight champion at the age of 21. But interestingly this enough, obviously won't be a dramatic victory unless he does something dramatic here, but it has been a good workmanlike job. Right, An effective back. victory. It was interesting to hear back. Kevin Rooney in the corner saying, with these judges, you never know. you got to go out there and win this round big. So Rooney just being a realist. I have to say something, bro. You know when I, when uh, I took a won the title against Buster Douglas, I felt that he needed more experience to deal with Mike Tyson. That he wasn't strong enough. No had the experience to deal with Mike Tyson. I say, it'd probably be a blowout. But he said, so what with these so-called experts? I'm going to show you. And this is what he did tonight. Yeah, and he has. Even if he loses the fight, he's probably made more friends than he has in the 34 wins that he's had. Friends and believers. You have to take your head off to the guy. I mean, he's in there with a monster in Mike Tyson. Who has fought a good fight tonight? Yes, he has. I mean, Mike Tyson has done the best job he could, he could possibly do against a guy as mobile, hand speed, height, and reach advantage. Look at it! And a guy who wasn't in there just to survive either. Come back. Come on, let him go. Come on, come on, come on. Watch out, watch out. Watch out, watch out. All right, we'll step back, Mike. My hand is my hand is Tony Tucker, as Larry Murch is always fond of saying, he had the big hat, and while maybe he didn't have all the cattle, at least he had a couple of cows. A right hand go, just Tony, go. barely back. grazed the chin of Tony Tucker. Crowd getting a little tired of that. Tucker seems to be fighting the kind of fight that he thinks he's winning.
says, no, 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 I'm all right. I'm all right. Tyson finishing with a flourish. And so is Tucker. Great finish. To a pretty entertaining evening. Tony Tucker talked the talk and walked the walk. He fought him. And he was a better fighter than most of us knew that he was. There's an old saying in boxing, you never know how good an unbeaten fighter is. And an unbeaten fighter is hard to beat because he doesn't know that he can be beat. And that's how Tucker fought tonight. Conversation going on between the two. This seems of a friendly nature. Tony Tucker, very religious man. And we await the decision, and, and we have seen some And here's ones. my card, which we will put up in a moment. I have Tyson winning clearly. In terms of rounds, it comes out 8-3-1. and one. The impressive thing to me is that Tyson was really rocked in the first round. He took the punch. He gathered himself. And after a few rounds of uncertainty, just went after it as a fight and let it happen. So if you had to capsulize the kind of fight, Larry, that Mike Tyson fought tonight, what would you say? Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. If you had to capsulize, we had a problem with Larry's headset, I should say. If you had to capsulize the kind of fight that Mike Tyson fought tonight, what well, would you say? Uh, Workmanlike, a good solid job against a guy who was there uh, and didn't let him land a lot of big punches. I think uh, for a guy who fought him back, he fought him back in a way that didn't expose himself to a lot of big punches, which everybody else has gotten from Tyson. And Tyson is not a one-punch puncher. He's a cumulative puncher. All right, we'll get the official decision now as we go up to the ring announcer, Chuck Hall. Chuck. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the decision of the judges. We have a unanimous decision. Judge Phil Newman scores 119-111. Judge Julio Roldan scores 118-113. And Judge Bill Graham scores 116-112. For the winner by unanimous decision, an undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike Tyson. So Mike Tyson, not surprisingly, the unanimous decision winner over Tony Tucker. Tony Tucker said when we talked to him the other day, he always referred to himself as the invisible champion. He'd say, I'd have a fight, and a couple of days later, somebody he'd run into would say, are you still fighting? I don't think he's going to have to answer that question anymore. In a losing effort, as we said, he probably won more fans than he's had in the 34 fights previous. Right now, let's get up to Larry Merchant, who is with Mike Tyson. Larry? Okay, Mike, undisputed heavyweight champion. Are you happy with the way you no, fought not tonight? not really, because I was trying my best to punch inside, but I guess it wasn't together today, and he was very intimidated, and it was very tough. Was he a better fighter than you thought? It was very hard to tell, because he did a great deal of holders. He did very fast punches. It was true. And he really rocked you in the first round. Yes, he did. He was a very hard puncher. How did you gather yourself together after that punch? What did that punch after, mean? After it hit me, I, it, it was history. It went away. Did you did it in, in any way intimidate you in the sense that give you respect for him, that no, he might hurt you? Not at all. Not at all. It seemed that after around several rounds that that you decided to step, stand down and not try to wing a lot of punches and just fight him and let happen what was going to happen Well, in the I was fight. thinking that he, because he was very intimidated, 
and he was freezing every once in a while, and I would think I would get him with a good right All hand. All right, we want to take a look at that punch in the first round, and I'd like you to describe it and just what happened, because... As you can see, I would say the bad mistake, like Donald Curry did, um, come right up in the middle after I went down, instead of going to the side, and then he threw a punch, and I was careless and it got hit. It seemed that he had came out in the, into this fight with the strategy of trying to come underneath you as you came in. Well, after he did the first time, there was no way he was going to do, make this, give me the same mistake again. What are your plans now? Everybody wants to know, are you going to fight Michael Spinks? Well, I don't know, really. You have to talk to Jim Jacobs right here. He handles well, all well, what are your thoughts about fighting Michael Spinks well, yourself, whether it's next time I or I two years from now? I fight whoever my manager wants me to fight. You know, I'm just a fighter. I do, I do what he told me to do. You're not as happy as one would think you would be for being the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Mike. Because, you know, as long as you make mistakes, can I tell you, you have no means to be happy. I'm a perfectionist. I want to be perfect. And I was trying to use my jab more. And I was just a little confused because he was holding a lot, but I, was, I stopped being frustrated and I just continued jabbing most of the round. Let's take a look at what happened in the last round when he came out in some desperation and started to throw big punches again. Describe what you see. What was all of this jiving and well, antics? He was he was a little intimidating. He would try to make me think that he was fresh and he was ready to go when he was not tired. I wasn't expecting him. But look, as soon as I come in, he grabs me. Mike, congratulations. Thank you, Larry. Undisputed champion, 21 years old. Do you feel now that you're the undisputed champion, that that really is more meaningful than the other championships in terms of history. I knew I would heavyweight, longest heavyweight champion when I beat Burger. Thank you very much. Okay, Mike, thank you. And back to you, Barry and Ray. Okay, thanks very much, Larry Merchant and Mike Tyson. Ray, I asked Larry Merchant how he would evaluate Mike Tyson's performance. Let me ask you not only how you would evaluate Mike Tyson's performance, but how you would evaluate Tony Tucker's performance. I mean, I think words can not really describe what I feel for Tony Tucker. I think what he displayed tonight was the fact that he was a non-conformist. He did what a lot of us didn't think he could do. And that's why I respect the man so much, because he, he boxed, he clinched, he fought a very strategic, a very tactical, a very intelligent fight. I had the feeling that he tried to borrow a page from the Ray Leonard playbook. When we talked to him just the other day, we talked about the fact that he watched your fight a lot. You talked to him a great deal about what you had to do to win, and it seems like he heeded that advice. You know, and I saw that in the making as the rounds were progress because I was saying the, the key to winning is the frustration to tie your man up, to break his rhythm and throw your punches and win that round at the end of each one. Let's take a look then at some of the final numbers from our punch stat statistics. And there they are, Tyson throwing 412 punches. Ironically, it was Tony Tucker who threw 452, but Tyson's punches were more effective. And I think probably the most important thing about this is that Tony Ty or Mike Tyson rather actually out-jabbed Tony Tucker, particularly so over the final few rounds. Now, Tucker, of course, came into this fight with a reputation as the boxer and Tyson as the puncher, but it was Tyson who did the jabbing and did so effectively enough to get inside and win a unanimous decision. Let's get back to the center of the ring now and Larry Merchant. Larry? Tony, uh, you fought a lot better fight than many people thought you were capable of. You really hurt him early in the first round. What happened after that? Why couldn't you follow up on him? Uh, well, you know, it wasn't no secret in the game. Early in, my, in the training, I hurt my right hand. And um, it was giving me some problems after the, the second round when I hit him. But I thought I still outboxed him. I was moving good. Um, Mike Tyson is a young kid. He's, a, he's what everybody, you know, everybody came here expecting him to win. The odds was, you know, in his favor. You know, uh, if it was a close fight, I figured they was going to give it to him anyway, you know, but I still thought I beat, I beat him, but that's okay. You know, the world know Tony Tucker is here, I'm for real, and, uh, you know, I praise God, you know, because he seen me through the fight, and, and he protected me, and um, neither one of us, you know, got hurt, injured, I mean, so well, we couldn't continue, but uh, I still praise God, and, I, and I'm happy, to, you know, that, that I'm here, but, you know. You were here. You made us notice you. Thank you, Tony. Yeah. And now, a few, few words to sum up. I'd have to say that at this moment, the heavyweight division is probably in a better shape than it's been in some time. We have a unified champion, and we have a challenger that everybody wants to see against that unified champion, Michael Spinks. When will a Michael Spinks 
and Mike Tyson fight come off? Well, I wouldn't want to hold my breath. If Michael Spinks could make a business decision not to fight Tyson in this tournament or not to fight Tucker for his share of the championship, then I suppose Mike Tyson can make a business decision on when he, as the undisputed champion, wants to fight this man. There are a number of reasons why the fight won't be held right away. But one of them, obviously, is there's a lot of bad blood between the camps because there was a contract that the Tyson camp feels wasn't honored. Secondly, they feel they can remain active and make a lot of money, the Tyson people. And who can Spinks fight? And where can he make a lot of money? And if their man is active and the other guy is not active, that's all to their good. And finally, third, the longer we wait, the bigger the buildup will be toward an eventual fight between the undisputed champion and the undisputed challenger, as it were. And now I'd like to make a, a personal note here. In the early 30s, a, a real fight fan was courting a beautiful young lady, and part of the courtship ritual was to take her to the fights every single week. And 50 years ago tonight, they were married, and after that marriage, she never went <laughs> to another fight again, which just shows to go you about how the price fight business is, the subterfuges people will go through to get to the top. I had to be at this party. I'm glad I was at this party, although I would rather have been at their golden wedding anniversary party in Hartford, Connecticut. I want to send my love and congratulations to my in-laws, uh, Jerry and Irving Stitt. Now back to you, Barry and Ray. Okay, thanks, Larry. Let's address the Spinks Tyson eventuality. And Ray, let me put you inside the head, if I can, of both Michael Spinks and Mike Tyson. Let's forget for a minute about the Jimmy Jacobs and the Butch Lewis and all the politics and all the legal affairs. Do you think these two guys really want to get at it and just get it on as soon as possible? Or would they rather just respect each other's respective titles, if you will, even though Spinks really doesn't have one, and just wait a little bit? You know, Barry, at this point now, I think it's, it's actually public demand. I think the public wants to see Michael Spinks and Mike Tyson go at it. Is that inevitable confrontation where is that two good fighters, two great fighters, uh, about to match. I think it's like two meteors about to collide. It happened with Hearns and I, Roberto Duran and I, and Marvin Hagler and I. So it got to happen. It should happen. Sooner or later, but in this case, it appears it's going to be later. You know, the one question that I have about this fight, and I really wonder what would have happened with Mike Tyson if he'd have fought Tony Tucker, let's say, six or seven fights ago. Might have been very, very different. Well, we want to remind you to stay tuned immediately following HBO's World Championship Boxing. We're going to have a most interesting movie for you, but we'll tell you about training camps and they, that they are open for business in the National Football League. And what that means is, of course, that we're gearing up for inside the NFL with host Len Dawson and Nick Bonacani. It premieres each Thursday, beginning with the kickoff of the regular season.